stepped up for his own own feet with Bartels. Still in there is Efting. Now Pye says you let it go. Patrick, now they'll move Heathgate, but every time they kick the ball, they're under pressure, trying to get to the front. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, free kick going the other way. Yeah, chop okay. of the arms, I think. No, it's got to go that way, I was going to say, yeah. Oh, hello. It's got a blood, blood rule here. Yeah. It's, a, it's a white horse free kick, we would have thought that. He was in front, he couldn't be chopping the arms. So we've just got an injury here, waiting for the blood rule to take place. The boy says you're right to go now. So they'll move it right where the blood rule was. They'll contest right in front. Good mark. Uncontested mark. Nice work there. Nice hands, Joseph Beadle. He's got a man short. That's not a good kick. Puts his teammate under pressure. He's good enough though, Jarks. His kick was smothered though. Here it comes back. It'll come back with interest if they can get hold of it. And they do. Handball out was okay. Through Taylor. Work by Pierce. Missed everything, I think. Oh, hello. It's it is on. There's a, there's a bit in this game. Oh, though, that's it? a big hit. Oh. Matt, well, you've seen it on your screen, so. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that is, this is no good doing this in front of a camera. Exactly. Never smart. And I'll tell you what, they're going for. There's yeah. no long loss, that's for sure, Brian. Well, you, you just got to pick a free kick out of this yeah, and get on with it. Alpine's got to take control. Because it, it's it's not stopping in it in a hurry. It's not indeed. <laughs> Apologies to our viewers. Good happening in the crowd too. What's the umpire going to do here? He's going to pay a free kick, and I reckon it's a it's a free kick's going to take him to line. It games are a little bit out of hand at the moment. It is, and again, just another undisciplined act. Is that a point? Was it? Okay, so is it a point? Well, that's why I signalled it, and then there's confusion everywhere, Brian. Now, now he's giving it back to White Eels. So it's a point plus a free kick. So it's my take on it. Is this Antwix again? Goal number six. It is. Well, uh, it's just a, it's a mad couple of minutes. This. I'm not sure what's going on here, Dave. 10-4-64. Plays Heathcote. 3-3-21. Three, three, and there's a few boys out there not actually going for the footy at the minute. No. From both sides, by the way. Yeah, exactly. One. Yeah, and that's where the focus needs to be. It's getting the agate, you know, down to the floor line of their respective sides. So lights are taking full effect. Come back and check some of those scores for you very soon, David. 12 yeah, no, gone this term. Rucks go at it. Didn't quite get there. Was Dowsett. Comes out wide. Look out. Here comes White Hills again. This time through Culprit. Towards the boundary line. Going in hard, these boys. But still, Fire says, give it to me. It's kind of weird, weird couple of minutes that wasn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, and like you say, Brian, they've got to be careful. As uh, yeah, free kick's been paid out to Edgar, just over the shoulder. So 10 for uh, 64. Still ball in dispute, try to get out of there was Thomas Payne. Now they're still in trouble, got to get rid of it. Tackle was good. Now they can go forward. He's got a bit of clear area at the moment. Yeah. Had more, yeah, can't get there. Rolls towards the back. Little short kick could be okay and is. Yeah, great. That's better from Heathcote. Exactly, and that's how you want to respond by, you know, just getting the footy and putting it on the scoreboard rather than... That's exactly right. So, uh, Butler, just smart. Yeah. Now, this boy's kicked some goals last week, Grinley. We've yeah. heard that, but yeah, we want exactly. to see one on the board because they're better. Than what's been uh, what, what they've uh, dished up so far. Yeah, and I think from the head coaching perspective, be a lot of uh, disappointment and frustration. So good lay. Crowd at the back of the goals. Brian, just uh, give him a little bit. A little bit of stick there, but you expect that. He's a good crowd, as I said. So he's going to get close to the man on the mark, Grinlay. The kick's on its way. Nice Looks kick. pretty good, I Great reckon. Kick. Or has he missed it? Missed it. Oh. Missed it when they needed one desperately. I thought we just snuck home, but anyway. So 3-4, 22. 
Those 10 for 64. 14 gone thanks to Central Victorian Footy Player Management. Ball comes out wide. Oh! Over the top. We all got a good look at that. Nice work from Bartels. Would have been mark of the day, even the year. Good tackle was on. White Hills numbers, ground level. Matt Sawyer gets pushed oh. out of there. And, oh, there is a bit of push and shove going on. And it's on again. I tell you, it is on again. It's on again. And Janet Dowsett was the man. I'm not sure he did much wrong in the buff, though. Probably a little bit high, man. But, yeah, it's very physical. Crab gets into it as well, Ryan. Right? So, you've got to remember, too, the white card rule comes into play. So, it'll be a free kick back to Whitehills. Ball, centre wing. Oh! He's going it off hands again. The tackle was good. Just got rid of it in time. Just oh, yeah, slung, slung down. Sling tackle, was it? Yeah. Okay, sorry, I missed it through the roof. So, free kick under Hickett. Yeah, it'll be Hamilton taking the free kick. He just goes backwards now. They need to settle. This boy's, boy's been good so far, oh. Liam Jarks. His kick's a bit dangerous. Oh, took the mark. He's going to play on it. Has to. Uh, pressure. Handball was... Umpire says... Yeah, got away. Lucky he could Yeah, he did get away with it. So, Willie Doreen comes wide. Kick's good. This boy's been good as well. Connor Hamilton decides to move it quickly and does. For Heathcote. Kicks it forward. Pack forms. Yeah, In good front. Mark. Good mark. This is better. Now they'll move it quick and they do. Nice work by Butler. Just got his kick in time. Towards the forward line. Off hands again. Oh, kept it in. Oh. Just kept it in. Little short kick oh, from kick. Corey. And that's a good yeah, work, a good passage of play. Put that down. From good play of the day so far. Yeah. So Grinlay was good in that passage just then. Liam Jarks was the man who came in and received on the left to Grinlay. And now they're lining up for goal. So about 45 out is Willie Long. And don't they need it, Dave Hancock? Absolutely, they do. Uh, Will Long sporting the, uh, what you don't see uh, in senior footy these days, uh, the helmet. No, you don't. So Long kicks on its way. Just got there, I reckon, yeah, too. And they needed it. So they get one against the Tide. Yeah, and probably the last three or four minutes has been naked. Again, it's just coming back to those unnecessarily uh, ill-disciplined actions that they're doing on the ground. Correct, yeah. 64 plays 28. And just while we're waiting for the ball to come back, Ryan, quickly, uh, Long Valley scores. Morong, 18, 16, 1, 24, the Pyramid Hill, 13, 4, 82. Bridgewater, 14, 12, 96. Big win over Newbridge, 8, 2, 50. Mini ammo, 7, 7, 49. Going down to Inglewood, 24, 28, 1, 72. And in the close line, Bear, Lagoon, Serpentine getting home, 15, 16, 106 to Calibre, 15, 9, 99. Thanks to Centre Victorian Player Management, Have Plumbing, Walker's Donuts, Rafael Jewellers with Super U Live Streaming. Off hands again from Sawyer, did well in it. Now Pice is a free kick. I just reckon they're getting first of the nut, Padmore. So Padmore, been a good player for Heathcote. Probably could have just about won the, the medal last year, played a bit more. Cavallaro comes out, off hands, nice work, nice defence by the coach Jackie Fallon and they'll throw it back in right in front of a very raucous White Hills crowd though. Yeah, good use of that word raucous so everyone because that's exactly what it is. Uh, great night, great atmosphere and you know, just a couple of winning sides. So Sawyer just tried to take that out of the ruck, couldn't. Now he goes in after it again. Little handball out was good. Tackle was on Cavallaro. He had to kick under pressure and did. So White Hills again, this time through Benny Bacon. What has he seen that he likes? Over there, he's put a team out under pressure. Oh, Ooh, just come over the back. Was uh, Birch. How did he get rid of that? Cavallaro goes in again. He gets gang tackled. He can't go anywhere with it. But the umpire says he had an opportunity. He did. Not sure about the prior, but anyway. No, I think the crowd aided in that free kick, to be honest with you, Brian. Just telling him to settle there. So, Petty Effing. Petty Effing. Effing, yep. I get changed his name from them, call him Effering. Yeah. Won't do that again, he's a big boy. <laughs> exactly. So Moffat goes wide, finds a man he likes out there. So Benny Bacon again, found a little bit of distance. His kick isn't bad, yeah, goes towards the boundary line. What's a good score, you're right. Gets about 20 metres on the kick. In fact, it's stayed in, has it? It has, as they all rush towards it. Geez, I tell you what, no one's taking a back step here, are they? No, like I said, Brian, both sides are going hard and really. No, I guess they've got a statement to prove to the rest of the league as well, you know? Yep. So approaching quarter time. Uh, half time. Half time I should say, Dave, I knew. Just checking to see if he did. 
So they'll throw it back in. The other winners in the Heathcote League, Elmore had another win. So that's 2-1 for Yeah, 2-1 for the Bloods. Uh... Over Lucci. North Bendigo got the points too in the bye. Yeah. <laughs> they get points to you. Oh, Hi. hang on, turn around. And Todowicz oh. kicks it long. All numbers with White Hills. That's a great defensive work piece yeah. of work back there. It was all White Hills. And this is much better response by the good defence, you know. Pretty sure it was Freeman Tavy back there. Well yeah. done. They, they they conceded a point when it should have been probably a goal. Yeah, exactly. Great score at the last line of defence. As the ball quickly comes out to back pocket for Heathcote. Looking for options. They well, keep going that wing too, Dave. They do. Which is a concern. There's Sawyer. Meets it on the half volley. Did well. Got his munger who he's on it. Gives it away. Turns around to Fallon. Baden variety. Oh, That's a good man. mark. What about, the, what about the skill with this bloke? Yeah, and look again, just probably not the right choice of kicking out to the wing for Hicka, then ball comes back into a two-on-one situation, just puts the Hicka defence right under pressure. So Caden Antwix, goal how many number, goals? Yeah, he's kicked six so far, this is going for goal number seven. We're not even half time yet. No, absolutely. So, you wouldn't expect him to miss, I thought he was going to go around the corner for a sec. No, going the traditional drop punt. Right behind him with the Super U cameras. On its way, pretty good off the boot. Would have thought he's going to miss too many in this competition this year. And he extends the lead for the home side. 11 5 71. Plays 4 4 28. Yeah, starting to worry in time there. Seven goals down at half time. It's going to be a lot to catch up in the second half for the Saints there, Brian. They've got the players to do it, trust me. They've oh, got the run. It's just where they, they just get stifled. Way to, the defence of Heathcote, oh, sorry, White Hills has been outstanding. It has indeed. So back in the middle. Mark Hoff will take on the bald headed man. Yeah, in Bart Sawyer. Yes, it's only time for the always looking spunky in your new Super U tops. Very impressive. I failed to get one, that was dumb. I ordered just one less, and that was mine. Marcroft, Sawyer, tap comes back, Efting, got a little handball out. There's the coach, Fallon, his handball was a ripper. Gives it off this time for Walker, oh, now picks it up. Oh, got rid of a tackle, just as you said. Turn around for Benny Bacon, kicks towards the middle, not good kick. And the mark taken there by Birch. Now Birch, got some runners on the outside, Dave, but Yay. decides to wait, which is not the greatest idea. Now he plays on, kicks it long towards the forward line. Who's back there for White Hills? Offhand, rush towards the back. Little chases on, and keep this one in. Ooh, just got one in the scone there, but the Birch. hit the fence. So. Yeah, Liam Birch on the 24 yeah. there. So an opportunity for Heathcote to get one back. Well, they probably need more than one behind the ice. Probably, if they can pinch two or three, just four half time. You can only get one at a time, Dave. Yeah, they need the next run of two or three, though. Little push at the back. Oh, yeah, well, boy, so you might have shoved him in the back. So, Good call. take a kick here, the big fella Sawyer. So, Sawyer just goes short. That's a good kick, or is it? No, turn around. No, it was behind him, Dylan Nile. There yeah. he goes. Good spoil there by number Call two. By Cavallaro. Yeah, and number two, Reese Bolton. Yeah, good work, good teamwork. <laughs> Just getting some interesting comments. Where are you watching from? Love to know where you are watching from. <laughs> so, tap comes down. Trying to get through was Efting. Comes to the back here. Little handball out there was okay. Need to kick it and they do through. Oh. Jarks on his left! Yeah, he's got, he's it. got it there too. Yeah, great so against the grain, Liam Jarks picks up a goal and they draw one closer anyway. They have Ryan and that's uh, what Liam has been renowned for over his journey of his footy career. Uh, as soon as he can see the goal, just that trusty left foot, beautiful kick uh, straight through the middle. Chris is telling me that on the camera, mate, that if it gets like this again, he's going to have to wear gloves. Yeah, it's getting a bit fresh. Like that, isn't it? Just while we're rugged up with those quality super you uh, hoodies that you Yeah, well, the old on. ones aren't as warm, trust me. <laughs> Do you reckon we made the super you on the back big enough for? Oh, you could go and be bigger, <laughs> to be honest. Right it. Yeah. Uh, comes down, here's a chance for Efting to go forward. His kick uh, didn't make it. Here's right, turns around for White Hills, taps it out the back. 
They all jump on top, still rolling forward, little kick out of nowhere. Now's the opportunity for Heathcote. They've got to oh, kick straight into the, the uh, White Hills forward. Now they move it forward. Still at ground level. It's gone Sorry. 20. Yeah, oh, no. oh no, it's gone back the other way. Yeah. It went 20 metres and no one touched it. It was just like a, off, off a leg, off a, off a knee. Beetle with the free kick. Just got to get someone to stand up in defence and keep doing that. So Beetle gives it off. Next kick, crucial. Good kick. Out centre wing where it's just a touch darker than it should be out there, though. It is, Ryan. Kicks to a contest, which is never good. Now's an opportunity. Goes back to Pierce. He'll go backwards to go forwards, and they're going to have to do that. Handball comes a little bit wide. Turn around, though. Nice work by Niall. Now he's on his right boot, kicks it long, yeah. straight to the hands of the defence. And this is much better play by the head of the defence oh, over yeah. the last five minutes. You know, really knuckled down and you know, just rebounding those four attacks by what he was. So Freeman Tabor gives it off. He gets it back. And again, it, it's a dead pocket, isn't it, out there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know there's not much they can really do about it because. Uh, Whitehalls have been on top in those areas, but yeah, again, it's just a, a pocket where it goes nowhere. So, mind you, it's not far away from the Pab Plumbing sign. We like Pabby. We do, great supporters of Super U Live and Local. So, ball towards the boundary line, they'll throw it back in. It's good happening in the crowd down there, mate. Yeah, town numbers are really good up around those hills, haven't they? They love them, don't they? Those big open fires. Yeah, it's exactly. country footy day. That's it, that's what it's all about, Brian. So ball thrown back in, just off uh, the scone it looked like of uh, the great man, Sawyer. Ball's going nowhere. Notice I was padding there because I could see it was going nowhere, Dave. Yeah, there was no, nothing to talk about. Exactly. <laughs> so Dowsett versus that man It just tapped it over the top, Sawyer. Ball comes out the back, opportunity for Heathcote, but yeah. I tell you what, they're all over when it when they get the ball here. Get the pressure is immense. Here's an opportunity. Little handball goes backwards. This is another passage of play. has gone 20 metres. Yeah, too high there. And, and no one had it. Bit of a swing tackle. He could just take it the momentum the last yeah. three or four minutes. Cavallaro well. moves it forward into the forward line. It'll go over the back, sitting at the back there. A couple of uh, White Hills boys. Who's going to defend Bacon? He's under all sorts of pressure. Did he get that? in the back yeah, of, the, he of the Heathcote forward? And he has. Yeah, up high's played it. Well, they've made the most of their opportunities, Dave, forward yeah. when they've had the opportunity here. Uh, Victor Butler, number yeah. 33. It's just Butler, isn't it? It is. Being a bit smart there, they've called him Butler Butler. <laughs> and I could have got sucked into that. <laughs> so, Victor Butler. Timely for Heathcote. Kick had to run a long distance, oh. and that's too far. So, he doesn't need anyone to tell him they required a goal. So 71 plays 35, 27 gone this term. Yeah, there's only been a two goal hit to uh, four goal White Hills quarter, so six goals in total. You wouldn't think there'd be too much time left on the clock there, Brian. Thanks to Sid to Victorian player management, kick goes out wide to that pocket. And if we were out there, never go there. You know that, Dave. It's bizarre. All the plays usually this side. Ball gets kicked around. In fact, it went nowhere. How was the ball? Receive then wasn't good. Here we go, Cavallaro. He'll get on that trusty boot. No, it swings around. Yes, he does. Gets on his right, brings it back towards the forward line. Who can take a oh, mark Greenlay. here? But he's good. It's that man, yeah, Greenlay. Greenlay, great mark. Number 21, Corey. Well, they should have him. had a couple of goals in a row, don't they? Yeah, absolutely right, Ryan. This should be going for uh, three goals straight, but in fact, it's going to be their first goal in uh, probably the last six, seven minutes. Yep. Super live streaming Saturday night. Good to be doing a few night matches. Grinlay going for goal number two. Yes, second goal. One earlier this quarter. Not much of an angle, not much wind. With a decent leap on the two run from what I've seen so yeah. far. Yeah. Interesting lineup. Kicks it now. Umpires a move that time. That's great goal. So he grabs one. Finlay, uh, Grinlay to make his second. 6 5 41. We're back to five goals. Yeah, even five goals spread, which is, like you say, Brian, you know, in two quarters of footy, uh, more than easy to get the ball back. Well, the other issue you said before is they've given away some ridiculous free kicks, 50 metre free kicks, and Andrew Saladino doesn't need to be told that, he'd know. But, you know, you take three of those away, all of a sudden, you it's know, you're, you're, you're a couple of goals away from it. Yeah, exactly. You know, being hot to try. Wouldn't be a lot left in this term. Mind you, there has been a few goals kicked, but 28 is where we're at. Ball goes up. Ball comes back down. 
towards that man who's been good. He gets gang tackled though in the middle. Yeah, the good up pressure. I said you had an op you yeah, tried to get through a few did you? He did, he did. And look, from the heck, probably the last five minutes they've had the better of the play. Yeah, this boy's been terrific. Ducks now gets on his trusty left, kicks it wide. Might sit up. Oh, oh, oh Gridley! How about that? He's just flipped the switch the last three or four minutes, hasn't he? Number 21, Corey Grimley, and this is what they've brought him into the club for. One of uh, Saladino's recruits from down the middle way, I believe. Did I wake everyone up with that call? I think he did, Brian. Everyone's looking up. I thought you were in agony there for a minute. <laughs> I noticed a few people looking up here. Well, it was a great mark. Oh, absolutely great mark. So Corey Grimley lines up from about 40 out. In fact, he might even be... It's got an unusual run-up, hasn't he? He's got a little bit of a stutter, shuffle, stutter. He, he can stand on his head, mate, but if it's accurate every time, keep exactly. doing it. Exactly. Whatever works for him. So Grinley deserves a goal after the mark. Umpire's not going to move. Right. He's got one. And I tell you what, Heathcote, what about so many? They don't want half time to come. They want to keep going. Yeah, mate. This is the funny thing. Like, really, it has been Heathcote all the last four or five minutes. Grinley kicking his second goal in as many minutes. So 7-5. They're on their way back, Heathcote. 47. 11-5, 71. White Hills. Day 30 gone this turn. Yeah, even spread a quarter, four goals two apiece. Um, and it brings it back to the same margin that we had at quarter time, everyone. Yes, indeed. So back to the middle. The Rucks will go at it this time. Bancroft. Ball comes out wide. They're just getting in. Oh, he's mm -hmm. called a throw. Dave White will take a kick for the for the Hillies. Yeah, he's called a throw. Ball says, what about my scone, mate? White now moves it, gets it going quickly, kicks it out wide. Someone's alarm's come off, gone off. Long as it's not mine, I couldn't care less. Ball comes That's out wide. Just, yeah. just got a little hand on it. James Davies, who had a good first term. Yeah, he's gone a bit quiet this quarter. Yeah, he has indeed. Probably more on a sign that he could actually climb more forward than anything. Off hands again towards the boundary line, beats everyone. They'll throw it back in. Clock just ticking over 31 minutes here. Long terms. So, little boundary umpire's done a good job. Ball thrown in now. Mancroft got the tap down, but it runs towards the oh, back. Yeah. Oh, deliberate. It. Oh, geez, he took him on, didn't he? Oh, a bit lucky there. Yeah, Blakey Hogan. You're very lucky. There was a couple of blues in this quarter, so that might have uh, added to the time as well. So not far away from our commentary box here, top of White Hills. All thrown in, just gets a little short. Still in there, Hogan. Ground level. Didn't want to tuck it into for too long. That's why Omar says, give it to me. Yeah, probably just gave the White Hills players benefit of the doubt there. So we'll keep you updated at half time. What's happening with the other games? Or what, oh, <laughs> excuse me, happened today. Free kicks coming back to White Hills. Through number 17 in uh, Ryan Walker. So Walker, Walker yeah. kicks it long now. They all sit and wait. Oh, should nearly have taken the mark. All going nowhere. Price says I'll have it. I think the best result for Hickett now is just to get that time down and go back into the break and full goal margin as they were at quarter time after being eight goals down, Brian. I just think they've been more adventure adventurous. Anyway, what? Uh, free kick being paid to Hickett. It might be nearly 50, is it? No. Padmore, who's got the free kick, and there is a siren, so he might be having a shot from there. And that is half time here at Scott Street. As the crowd just continue to have conversations, mate. Because yeah, exactly. Interesting crowds around the place. Last week at Elmore, it was very fiery and very, very uh, vocal, but tonight they're, they're just. They're having a combo, mate. It's like they haven't caught up with friends forever. Yeah, and it's good fun to see if you have a look at the uh, camera pandemic in, in what is commonly known as the uh, hit area of the uh, White Hills supporters group. Very strong, and as I said, staunch contingent here at White Hills. Yeah. But I thought, Brian, that quarter was probably, the second half was probably all heat, get after some ill-discipline acts early on that gave uh, White Hills the ascendancy to be out four goals. Heat responded with the last four goals in the quarter. So as the White Hills boys make their way off the field. And Heathcote do their thing. And uh, we'll just give you some of the scores now before we take a break at half time. Some of the results today, Dave. Yeah, Bendigo Football League, we're looking at uh, big win, Eagle Hawk 17-10-102 over Gisborne. Flag favourites, 9-9-63. Maryborough had a close 
Uh, game against Kangaroo Flat. They're only going down by 17 points. Kangaroo Flat 11 12 78 to Maribyrnong 7 19 61. South Benigo 14 8 92. Uh, strong win over Clayton 5 16 46. Sanders uh, cuts off your team, Golden Square 13 16 94 to Golden Square 8 11 59. My team. Your team, Brian. Um, and down at Camp Reserve, Castle Main 4 5 29. Going down by to the Storm, 17-24-126. So a 97-point win there to the Stormers. Yeah, winners in the Heathcote League today because we've had a full round, with the exception of this game. Uh, Lockington, Vermont had a win over over Huntley. Uh, Elmore had their second win over Leachie Gunny, and it was a win for the Mounts. Mount Pleasant defeating Colbo uh, out at Colbo. It was a big day for the McAvoy brothers. Uh, half time here, you can see the uh, the score in front of you, a 24-point lead to White Hills. We'll be back with uh, well, second half action coming your way soon. Super U live streaming right across Australia. High contact number 22, your free kick right there. You've got to be kidding me! That's what I got for the back, you idiot! You leave your class at home, you Look, Pete, uh, I know you got a bit of news this week. We might touch on that game first up. And it is a, besides the, the, I mean, look, I, I think we should play more night footy. Um, I think it's great. It's a great spectacle. It's nice to start a bit later. It's a, you can go and do other things, um, as, you know, was last week. But, gee, Colbo and Mount Pleasant, this is going to be massive during the day. And there's a, there's a lot of reasons. They're both um, thereabouts, mm. obviously, but, and they hate each other. We love that. But also the fact that there's a, something big happening at Colbo Sunday, Pete. Yes, um, yeah, Ben McAvoy is going to play this week for, for Colbo. Um, it'll be his last game of football, I believe. He goes into a hospital next week for an operation and that'll be the end of it. But um, I spoke to uh, a well-rounded man at, at uh, Colbo today and I just said, what is Ben's... Um, connection with with uh, Colvin Adam and his brothers so if you bear with me for a second um, his father John was born and bred in Colbo as a premiership player uh, Ben married uh, a local girl in Nikki Stewart now Nikki's got a twin sister Jenny so I'm, I'm hoping he married Nikki and not Jenny but uh, he certainly married Nikki um, his brother that's playing there this week um, Hasn't played with Colbo. He's currently playing down at uh, Northern Division One down there. Uh, his brother Matt played 120 senior games, um, and he last played in 2019, the year before COVID. So all those guys have been up and about. Uh, you know, I can understand it's a great family tradition to play with your brothers, um, but it goes deeper than that. There's there's four other brothers or uncles out there in the Colbo area. Um, there's John, Ray, Terry and Phil. Um, Terry's the one on the farm. Uh, Phil's daughter is playing with a AFL with Carlton, I believe. Um, Anne McAvoy, uh, who is Ray's wife, is a life member of our league. Uh, and her daughter, Olivia, is married to Julian Bull, who uh, Olivia is um, also a life member of our league. So, you know, the, the McAvoy name is very synonymous with Colvin Abbott, even though uh, Ben hasn't actually played for them, um, but he's he's got strong ties to the area. And uh, for him to come back, and he's only recently retired too, he's only finished this year. So, and and being the type of AFL footballer, was a captain of Hawthorne, dual premiership player, he wouldn't let himself get um, too shabby in a short period of time. So, yeah. That's a big day for Colbo, and, and on top of that, they've got their sponsors' day, 
and their Ladies Day, which is raising money for um, the cancer research in Bendigo. And the first round each year they play Colvo, uh, sorry, they play Mounts, they play for the Conroy McTaggart Cup. So that's similar to what Mounts do with, with uh, Heathcote, uh, similar to what I think White Hills do with North Bendigo uh, with the Golden City Cup, or was that with Huntley? I'm not quite sure. I think it's White Hills. Um, so, yeah, so it's a big day for, for Colvin Adam, and I suggest that anyone that's over that way that's looking for a good game to have a go and have a look at, because both of them only had one win, um, yeah, it'll be a super game, um, you know, and it'll 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 test mounts and it'll test Colbert. So yeah. Well, so, um, if you've just joined us, thanks for joining the Colbert Avon Footy Club show. Um, <laughs> we've just got uh, got that out of there. But look, Ben McAvoy last week they probably, all due respect, struggled a bit in the ruck. They had a lot of work to do against um, Russell, uh, the big tattooed man. Um, so it'd yeah. probably come in handy, I would have thought. And the other thing is for Julian Bull, I, I got a message for you, Bully, and I saw him Saturday, is I wouldn't be messing around with the McAvoy family, mate, because you, your name's Bull, they're McAvoys, and you're married. You're in <laughs> trouble, mate. I actually saw Bully on the weekend. Uh, here's a little tip. There's not He's not going to be out of the game too much. He, he couldn't stand still, mate. So um, he was watching the game. Uh, and I'm sure there's others out there. Gavin Bowles is another one we'll get to in a sec uh, with you, Jack. But certainly... Um, yeah, it's great to be talking about this, guys. I think it's fantastic, and Colbo will be just pumping on Saturday other. Absolutely, and you know, and 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 credit to Colbo because the two guys they brought back, and these guys, these two coaches, will know they they, they bring points with them. They're not playing for nothing. Mm. Um, they come with large points, so someone's got to be sacrificed to fit them in if they if they already can't. So yeah. it's a juggling act. So. Um, but knowing Colbo as I do, they'll uh, they'll have it all sorted. Uh, and Jack, um, it was a message from Lauren Bowles earlier in the netball show to to talk about um, Amy Morris, who joined us earlier. She said, "Is there any way you can ask Jack to get Gavin out of the house because he's a pain in the ass?" No, uh, <laughs> he's only really retiree. What are you doing with Gav? Have you got a spot for him? Are you, is he on the bench or anywhere? Nah, so Gav's actually he's been cruising around. Just obviously. Um, Loz is still playing, so he's on dad duty full time. So um, I have had a couple of messages from Gabby to ask if he can come down and have a kick and train because I think he is getting into his feet. But um, I said, mate, you're more than welcome to come and have a train and, and see what happens. But yeah, I think I think once it gets a bit colder, uh, a few people start to go missing a bit. But no, nah, there's there's always a spot for Gabby at White Hills and everyone knows that. So yeah. And just a message from Kirsten too, again for you, Andrew, saying that She's asked me a few times, mate, she can do special comments. She reckons she knows more, more about footy than you do, your wife. <laughs> hey, uh, she's actually the coach of Heathcote, mate. I get everything from her. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised, uh, No, she does, uh, she does love the game and wants to umpire and um, and commentate and do a bit of everything. So I've just had to tell her, you know, Saturday is my day. So, <laughs> yeah. I'm serious, mate. She, you know this. She's already texted me saying if, you know, you're doing a Heathcote game and you've got sure, oh, I'm happy to jump in. And she's serious. And, and she'd be great. So we'll take her off on the office soon, not this week. Um Mate, uh, Pete, let's just have a quick look at this too, if we can. Um, obviously, this round here, Huntley Lockington. Uh, I noticed Stacey Fisk is playing. I didn't. I thought he was just coaching, but obviously back playing too. I think that was all his intention to, to play. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, well, Huntley and, and Lockington, there'd be a fair bit in it, um, you'd have thought. Huntley at home, um, obviously be a better side than than away than were last week. So they'll be trying to put the rights or the wrongs the right from last week. Um, yeah, still going to be a tough gig against Lockington, but uh, let's hope that they're a lot more competitive than what they were last week. Boys going for Lockie, Jack? Or are you going? For yeah, him? I think Lockie. I think I think Lockie will get it done. I, I know, and I like last couple of years. Um, Huntley actually has matched up pretty well against Lockie. They've given him a bit of a run, but obviously now Stace has gone out there and he'll take that game plan, I would have thought. And, yep. and yeah, having the Collinses and whatnot, they'll, they'll dig away all day as they do the dogs. Just keep yep. digging and digging and digging. Great call, mate. He, he would certainly know that plan. Um, Harry Whittles might be a bit different, but he knows the players. Uh, Andrew, thoughts? 
Yeah, I think Lockington will be too strong. Um, they'll be they'll be disappointed with dropping a four or five goal lead last week late. Um, so yeah, I think they'll bounce back pretty strong, and I think Stace will get one over his old mob. Uh, the next one, Pete Colbo Mounts. I've seen both. I've been lucky enough to broadcast both, and I reckon there's absolutely nothing in this. Uh, Mounts are probably a bit stiff against North. Having say, said that, I think there are, and Darren and and um, Skinny and that would be safe to say they're lucky it rained. I reckon North were on that day. We're going to probably kick a big score, but they didn't. Um, and last week, uh, Colbo, I reckon, just snuck over the line. So I don't reckon there's much in this. Oh, absolutely. Um, there, there won't be much in it either. And, and as I said, I, I can't take much out of um, Mounts last week. Um, they've got some good young players that have arrived at the club. Um, but... Um, such a big day for Colbo. Um, you know, I'd be tended to go with the home team, as I do when I'm 50-50. And I think the day, the, the occasion, um, you know, Ben McAvoy kicked five goals, standing in, in the goal square. Um, be hard to match up against guys six foot, what is he, seven or eight or something like that. So, yeah, I think they only have to get it down there. Um, so I'd go Colbo in a, in a close run by less than a couple of goals, I reckon, Colgo, but with no confidence. Yeah, and, and what Andrew and Jack and uh, people watching, what he really wanted to say is that Colbo, crap, my size mouth, <laughs> old him, stuff him. <laughs> ah, whatever. I'll get a good gate. That's about the only thing that went on at eight. That's what he wanted to say. <sighs> Jack, what do you think? Um, yeah, I'm a little bit up in the air on this one as well. I think, oh, you got sort of Dan's in the ruck that will come up against McAvoy and he'll, you know, he's one of those players that likes to take that, um, you know, good ruck when you'll go head-to-head -head with him all day. So, oh, God. I think I think Colbo will get it done at the home deck. Obviously, ladies' day as well. You, you seem to seem to step up at the club with all that kind of stuff as well. So, um, maybe I reckon it'll, it'll be a, you know, single-digit game, I reckon. Yeah, good to see Nick Knight back, my old mate for Colbo last week. Uh, he's been around the club a lot and Rochester too and, Good to see him back <clears throat> out of place. His number did number fifty four or something, but that he said I'm just having a he had a year off and he's back playing. I think it's great. Um, what do you think, Andrew? Uh, yeah, tough game. Um, obviously, I haven't seen Mount Pleasant yet this year, but um, I think Colbo at home always pretty hard to stop, um, especially with with the three brothers coming in. But um, I know Benny Waitman. Whenever you see sort of him him playing, I think he kicked eight last week. Um, you know, you always know they're a chance. Um, I, I reckon there'll be a, a goal in it either way. I reckon it'll be pretty close. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Leach, you take on um, Leach, Leach will gun bow, as we should say, Pete. This is the correct name. Uh, take on Elmore. This one's at, at Leachy. Uh, hard to say. I haven't seen Leachy yet. I've seen the scores. They look great. Um, you played them first round, uh, Jack. Yep, they are. Uh... They're very competitive, like they were last year. You got a got a young young team. They crack in. Um, got another ruckman too from Darwin, so he goes okay. Um, and then you obviously got that uh, Joby Ward, who's a superstar in the ruck. So it'd be obviously Elmore picked up some some ruckman as well. So yeah, it'd be a, that'd be a good test down there too. Is it Leachy or Gunbow? Uh, Leachy, Leachy. Yeah, Leachy. Oh yeah, I think Leachy might go alright in that game. Mm. Andrew. Yeah, I'd, similar to Jack, I don't think Leachy uh, were, as, were as bad as probably the score suggests last week. Like, they cracked in. Their pressure was really good for the whole day. Um, they've definitely improved from last year. Um, and I reckon big ground. I watched the colbo Almore game last week, and uh, they were quite big, Almore, but looked a little bit top-heavy. So I'm going to, yeah, I think Leachville on the, on the big ground might do them with their leg speed. I think one of the things I got from Elmore, Pete, was the fact that Dylan Gordon was playing in the back line. And that said to me that they've got enough players in the midfield and certainly up forward to be able to you know, let him do that. He he, play, he probably got the votes in the weekend. If he didn't get three, he probably got two. So um, it's a good luxury for Elmore to have if they can keep it that way. I would have got three the week before, too, full back. Like he, he's a genuine superstar mm -hmm. of our yes. competition. Yep. How many guys are six foot four and do what he does? But yep. um, with with Leachy Gumbauer, um People forget they've played White Hills and they've played Heathcote, the two sides of the people are tipping to be top four um, in the in the first two games. And that's when you've got a young side get, coming together, that's they're normally your worst games. Uh, well, I'm tipping them to do an upset up there at home on that big ground. Uh, if there's any flaws in Elmore, it'll be exposed because 
as the boys have said, that they crack in and that's all you ask. Well, I'm not saying that Elmore don't, but uh, Elmore will only want to be a slight bit off and um, they'll get their pants pulled down because young, big running side on that big ground and of good conditions. Um, yeah, I just think, I just got a feeling that Leachy Gumbau might cause an upset. Um, apologies to Sean Cullo too from uh, Elmore who last week mucking around said, oh, you'd be starting on the bench because I thought he was Dylan Frydenberger because they look similar. Apologies, Sean. He looked at me funny. <laughs> um, boys, this is a big one. Welcome back to Scott Street here at uh, the big game between Heathcote and White Hills. And I'll tell you what, it is cool. <laughs> it has got very, very cool, trust me. But we're in for an interesting second half. You can go either way. It can be a massive win to the home side. Or it can... Dave, you're glad you could make it. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. Just uh, mingling with the uh, White Hills workers here. Just getting a bit of the... Uh... Fueling the atmosphere in the crowd, so to speak. We're here now. Right, we'll take your word for it. Anyway, back in the middle, rucks go at it. This time, Markroft got the tap for Heathcote. Come through sideways. Wasn't a mark. Had to play on Birch, and he did. Now's an opportunity for a Willie Long. They bring it back towards their forward line. They love the first Heathcote. Off hands again. Contest on. Had balls in there for Heathcote. The umpire says, give it to me. Yeah, and White Hills coach, I listened to it at halftime, Jack, so I'm just a little bit concerned about the last half of that quarter, saying that basically the one half quarters they played really well, but just really lost their way a bit in that second half. So ball again at ground level, I'll throw it back up again. Last yeah. the boys really get some early goals, just put a bit of scoreboard pressure back on the Saints. So, still a little kick off the ground, might result in a clearance. Here's Grinlay, turns around, gets on his left, kicks towards the goals, wrong side. They'll get their first score, third term. That is Heathcote, Dave. Yeah, good start for the Saints there. Attacking already. So. They get the first, all of a sudden things might change a little bit. But as you said, it's... Uh, good running play there by Heathcote. You're gone. In trouble, yeah, umpire says you'll play it on now, and they do. White Hills going forward, goes over the top of everyone. Racing back towards it, Antonowicz beaten to it though by Buckley. Turn around, kick on his right boot. Bartels, I should say, that is a goal. So they get the first win, Heathcote wanted it. Twelve five seventy seven. 77 David? Yeah, Play 7 6 48. Yeah, exactly what uh, Jack Brown asked for his troops uh, coming out to start this third quarter. And William Bartels, just a classy snap around his body, Brian. I just reckon you, you. I don't think they will want to play a loose man in defence, but they may have to just clog it up a little because if it comes open like that, yeah. uh, it's tough. It's a tough gig, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, we've seen that uh, first quarter and a half, how White Hills were, yeah, where they were loose, he could um, just run all over him. Self hands again, try to get through, little handball was good, turn around, kick it was Jarks on his left, goes forward, back into the pack with courage. They work hard, still no one can get a decent possession, just kicks out of there wide, was was Barton towards the boundary line. Opportunity now. Turn around and kick towards the middle. Was going to be dangerous. Little handball was all good though. Here comes White Hills again. Here's his open forward line we spoke about, oh, and that's hand. what happens. Yeah, exactly. So. And he called a brilliantly, Brian. Just, he could just need to uh, man up. And I think you're right. I think Coach Andrew Saldana is going to have to look about dropping the one back for that plus one. So White Hills. Where they started off in that first term, no one's moved. The umpire's the most important person. He has not moved. So they get their second third term. Yeah, another goal for Warner, which makes it his yep. uh, second goal for the match. Thirteen-five, eighty-three. 
on a very cool night. Wouldn't like to know what the degrees was. Not quite tight in weather, but certainly very, very cool. I'd have to be uh, getting down to single digits now, I'd say, for lunch. You'd think so. Nice big fire going off over there too, mate. Yeah, I was talking to a couple of locals um, getting an advantage of the heat emanating from that fire, Brian. Here comes White Hills again, out of the middle. Oh, and it's all a little bit academic with the forward line at the moment for White Hills. He just can't do anything wrong. Yeah, just getting in front and playing uh, a little bit loose uh, is White Hills. And just, like you say, Brian, they might have a third goal in as many minutes. So, it's deja vu just in a minute. Let's watch where the umpire goes. He's not moving far at all. He looks pretty good. So, two in the space of a, a couple of minutes, and Warnock kicks a goal for his club. Yeah, and that's goal number three for um, Nick Warnock. Um, again, just it, what he was doing, exactly what Coach Jack Fallon asked him to do, was that put that early scoreboard pressure on early. Thanks to Central Victorian Player Management. Where, where does Troy all get chalky from, by the way? Teacher? I believe so, yeah. Ex Stano local, and I think, yeah, just due to his profession being a teacher. Yep, check out his Facebook page too, make sure you like it. He's got some good stuff happening in there. Back in the middle, scoreboard all of a sudden looks a, a touch ugly for Heathcote. Turnaround kick by F10. Goes out wide, pack forms, bounces in the opposite way for White Hills. Little handball was just that. The umpire said it's all right, he got rid of it. Little handball again, still going nowhere. They might have an opportunity to get out of jail there through Irwin. Kick goes wide, little push out of there was good by Price. Would have been Willie Long in there, doesn't matter because uh, Heathcote still are chasing the bums back. at the moment. No. And Price says, give it to me. Yeah, Second of the ball at the moment, aren't they, Heathcote? They are, they are. Probably not the start Andrew Saladino wanted. So they go after it again, little tap there. Tried to run it at the back there. It was Billy Price. And Price says, we're going to give you a free kick here. This might be something they can get going for the uh, Heathcote boys. So Jordan Cavallaro, thanks to GPO, mate. Good feed too, by the way. Yeah, great feed at GPO. Short out wide. Notice the old man hasn't got back to me on a text message, Pete. Any danger? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nice kick wide, goes 50. Man sitting at the back there it is Good all uh, Heathcote there. So Dowsett has played a little bit in the ruck. His kick is good too, Thomas Payne. Wanted to move it quickly and did. Goes into the forward line. Kick's not bad. Off hands. They roll towards the back. Numbers with Heathcote. Can he get rid of it to the back there? He does. Turn around. A little kick out of there by yeah, Callum well, Birch. He's got, he's got, got there. So they get one, day. They do. They do, Brian. But the problem is, why does Rory kick through this quarter? So, you know, they're not reducing the deficit at half time. In fact, you know, they're... It's a, bit, it's a five point extra deficit, what you're saying. Well, that's right, exactly. And you're an accountant, how are you going? <laughs> yeah, not good. It's a bit cold for me, brain to kick in the gear. But no, what I was trying to say is uh, they already kicked three goals while he was still here, gets one, so they've extended the deficit by an extra 12 points. So, back in the middle of Scott Street. Been a good game of footy. White Hills have been outstanding. Let's see if Heathcote can get back into the game. Efting, he'll get a boot on it. He does. Kicks it into a teammate. He's done after it again. Patrick Efting, still going nowhere. Umpire, young Josh says, give it to me. Yeah, great contest there by both sides. Ask them to clear out, and they do. Sawyer, big punch. Goes wide, little handball in hope more than anything by Padmore. Gives it up. Short kick is good. Hillies. Thought about moving it forward. Now it comes back over the mark, kicks it. Uh, Bartel short, good kick. Yeah, great kick there by Lee Bartel. And so, you can just see, sorry, Ron, you can just see as soon as that play was happening, the White Hills plays spreading wide and deep. He's benefited this, uh, this, excuse me, this year early, Baden Fallon, having some uh, other players around him to really run the ball. So yeah, he can get those one on ones. He was good last year. Yeah, but absolutely correct. Had to do a bit more work. <laughs> so Fallon. Heathcote don't need it, White Hills won't care. <laughs> Gets onto it, Great kicks kick. it long, looks pretty good, in fact it's missed. So, just the point. I'll be happy with that. Oh, oh, oh yeah, look it was. So they've got to move it, move it 
quickly, Heathcote, but maybe not that quick. Taylor, just put him on the mark. Not sure about that. Anyway, so Taylor, got to move it now. Oh. Good work. Nice work in there by Padmore. The tackle's oh, on. He got fended off. And the umpire said he dropped it. Well, it was either a fend off or a drop, one of the two. Yeah, exactly. High fend off. I think he's just helping him up. Padmore. Yeah. The boy from Wallen, Raiden Padmore, now gets onto it, kicks it right in front of our commentary. Rucks go at it, big punch at the back there, tap down. Now they've got work to do. He's good if they can move it forward, and they do. Nice work by Jordan Cavallaro. Ball goes wide, trying a little push and shove. Yeah, yeah bad luck. Which way is he going to call that? He's Thought the counts. Which way is he going? Yeah. Oh, he's going the other yeah, way. Okay. Yeah. Gee. A bit unusual because I thought the intent of Kai Cavallaro. Yeah. So Cavallaro to Cavallaro. To Cavallaro. I thought the intent of Cavallaro was probably more the man rather than the ball, but anyway. Could have gone either way. Exactly. So Kai Cavallaro, thanks to GPO. Remember that, Pete, when you get back to me eventually. Tina for two, I believe, Ryan. So Cavallaro. Kicks on its way. Pretty good. Got it. They get one back. I keep saying that because they can't get much. They just don't seem to get under five goals at the yeah, moment. Yeah, that's right. The momentum shift uh, as soon as uh, they get to that four, five goal margin. Wide was there, kicks the next two or three, and then the heap of the play and the catch up footy to get back to that same deficit. The, the, the only thing is that, you know, we just noticed that the, the big Ruckman uh, obviously came off. There he comes here. There were Matty Sawyer and a few others, and his, his, uh, his, uh, his man, uh, Blake Hogan, has gone in the middle, but they just look young Heathcote so whether or not they run out the game a bit better who knows well yeah only time will tell I guess but you know in saying that it's, it's probably in those and I'm sorry I'm not half an hour, but it's true those yeah. little discipline acts like Shannon Dowsett will take on the man who just uh, whipped onto the ground you take off like those over. three or four goals that are giving away from 50s Dave starting to do his sums now <laughs> worried about that punch from Hogan goes towards the back there couldn't pick it up was Thomas Payne Still rolls towards Padmore. He's first to it, gets bumped off it. Umpire says all fair and love and more. Opportunity for White Hills. They just have the numbers. Balls goes towards the boundary line in front again. Good punch at the back there. That's much better by Heathcote. Turn around the corner. They can get out of jail here, Heathcote, if they go wide or dangerous. Anyway, Liam Jarks will do the right thing. And this bloke's got a paddock. He's off to the races if he wants. Lockless, Lachlan Innes does so. One on one back there, off hands again. They're at the, the bottom of the pack and oh, they are. Turn around, that. nice work. It's got it. Corey, He's got it. Corey, 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 Corey. Grinlay, second mark of the year, I think, and got another one for his club. They move closer now, Dave. Well, they're back to that full goal margin now, Brian. So, yeah, 3 1 each this quarter so far. 10 6 66, White Hills 14 5 89. And I, I just watch with interest. A couple of White Hills boys on their haunches. That's yeah, all. Exactly. I saw it from a team called Essendon at three quarter time yeah, on the weekend. No, I did. I saw. I went. You yeah, know what? Yeah. They're a bit buggy. Yeah, they were, and they put up a mighty effort there. So, but you could just see exactly that. But I'm we played. Out of their feet. What's the what mark of the quarter are we in? With a ten minute mark, we've played seventy five minutes of footy already because yeah. we've had two thirty two minute quarters. It's a lot of footy. It is indeed. For round number two, three. Sorry. So at they go, up they go again. This time, still going nowhere. The question's got to be remaining whether that four goal deficit's too much for him to get back there, Brian. You just, yeah, that's right. You just wonder why Dowse, it doesn't, instead of tapping it, give it a whack for him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's just tapping it there, which is fine, but his team's under pressure. And we saw that last week, didn't we? Exactly, didn't we? Colin was just yeah. knocking the ball forward, knocking the ball forward. He's doing the right, the right thing, ruck wise, but give it a whack. Yeah. Might get a free kick out of this. Yeah, he is. Not to get on is it? Or White Hills? Yeah, Benny Hogan will be the man. Sorry, Blake Hogan, Gordy Benny. So, Hogan, got a little poke in the eye, I think. Kicks it wide, man out there just all on his yeah, own, slips at the crucial time. Straight to a hit Which was oh, great play. Now it comes back to where it came from. So they set it up again, White Hills. Big pack flies, man at the front couldn't take it. Good effort, though. Still working hard. Just got numbers now, Heathcote. Got to get rid of it, though. Pressure's on. Oh, look at this man, Caden Antonowicz. Turn around, he got round one, got round two, right. got a little handball in, probably had to kick it, yeah. didn't. Turn up there by Jarks, kicks it long, man out in front, oh, good, good mark. mark. Finlay again. Yeah, so Finlay, oh hang on, that's oh. got a red, no he did say play on, so good oh, kick forward by Finlay at the back there. That's We've got it. a free kick anyway. The home crowd aren't enjoying that, yeah. but it was a hanging on. It was, it was the right call by the umpire and 
again, it's just showing heat in the last five minutes. Uh, once they apply themselves to the footy, actually we are getting the results on the board, Brian. So, another goal, David. Yep. Yeah, yeah, no worries. As Grinway lines up for goal number five, or is it actually Birch? I believe it's, it's Birch. It's Birch, Liam yeah. Birch, yeah. yeah. So, Birch, who is looking to kick his first for the night. 30 metres out directly in front, makes no Kicks mistake. Kicks it long, umpire's got to move, doesn't worry anyone. There's a big crowd down there way, uh, uh, that way supporting Heathcote, I would have thought. So, 72, they get back to 17 points, Dave Hancock. Uh, 18 points, I believe, 14, 6, 90, they're uh, 11, oh, Okay, 6. sorry, I'm behind in mine then, I no, apologise. Right. Good time, but yes, you're right, it's a three goal game, which in plenty of time to go to pull back that Yeah, deficit. absolutely. So, all back towards the middle. Umpire Ma throws it up. Hogan got the tap for White Hills. Rolls towards the back. Little kick off the ground was good by Fallon of the Baden variety. Yeah, and it's going good nowhere and they will throw it back up. Yeah, good play there by Billy Price. Nice strong tackle. So, tap again. This time, they kick it wide, he'd get all the wide hills back there. Yeah, good mark. Great mark there. Strong hands. Now, this is where White is really doing well. It's that spread. Just a shorty. Good kick. Just probably need to hang on to a bit of possession at the moment, the yeah. Hillies. So, kick goes long into a pack. Got to defend. Take good the mark. mark. Didn't. Right. Got the second grab. You would have thought they might have paid that to Lockie Innes. Yeah. Oh, so it's given to me. Yeah, ball looking a bit dewy, as you said, skidding along the ground, and yeah, you're right, Brian. Probably, uh, given the conditions, you probably would have been on the side of the paint that free kick, or that mark, I should say. Umpire picked a free kick out here. Yeah, <laughs> responding really well in this third quarter. So here we go. Well, I reckon there's more people down there be around the fire than there ever has been at this club. So Grinlay's club, they need it. How's it looking off the boot? He hasn't kicked it yet. No, he's he's a distance, mate. He's 45 out. He might not make the distance. No, in fact, I'll take that back because he's, he's made it all right. He's it looks it. pretty good. They enjoy it. The boys in red, white and black. And they've got another. Here comes the Saints. Yeah, and just looking at the white hills, coaches box there. A couple of worrying signs there. Just probably last eight to nine minutes, it's just been all heat attacking in the 50. Not only are they attacking, they're converting truly, Brian. And all of a sudden, we're back to a two goal game. Ball back in the centre, one by no one. Ball out to Hickett, is that a high tackle? No, so the umpire on Jarks. Jarks is still down. Kicked there by Hickett through Dowsett. Smothered there by White Hills. Hands off to no one in particular. Dowsett's going There's a couple of boys down. down at the moment yeah, too, yeah. Jarks is down. Goes forward, good mark. Yeah, great mark there by that man, number three in Warnock. So he's in the line up, how many goals did he kick, Dave? Uh, he's lined up for number four now, Brian. Three for the night so far. As Jax just comes to his feet, aided by the trainers. Great camera work there by Chris, our cameraman. Super U live in Rosie. Warnock, line up for a much needed goal for White Hills. And the 
Black Lives pulled that one behind Ellie. I'll tell you what, it's funny you just said that, Dave, you're right, a much needed goal. It sounds, it sounds strange saying that when they've got a two and a bit goal lead. But momentum more of Heathcote as the chip comes back to the pockets. Mark's there taken through number eight in real long. Long looking to play on. Up by says no, go back over your mark. He's going around one, sold the candy. It's been good long since he came on. Ball back in the middle, good mark. Oh, oh, I should have taken the mark there. There's the big.